Good morning, and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, and thank you especially to Carrie Charlesworth for coming up here today to share her story and to be willing to testify this morning in the uh, uh, committee where this bill is going to be heard. The Assembly Judiciary Committee this morning is going to hear Senate Bill 400. This is my bill that will prevent employers from firing or discriminating against an employee who has been a victim of domestic violence, sexual assault, or stalking. It will also require employers to make reasonable efforts to protect these victims from their abuser or stalker, such as changing their workplace telephone, relocating their desk, or implementing a workplace safety plan. Probably in today's world, a good idea in just about every workplace. The problem, as you will hear Carrie Charlesworth's story, is this. Our current laws encourage, indeed they aid and abet abusers and discourage victims from coming forward when we should be empowering and supporting victims and working together to make our workplaces safer. I introduced this bill a couple months ago before Carrie Charlesworth's story of being let go from her teaching job because of her domestic violence status began making headlines around the country. But when I hear Carrie's story, it, was clear, it is clear to me that her situation helps to illustrate in very, very clear terms what I am striving to do with this legislation. Carrie's story has indeed struck a nerve because we all know that inherently firing a victim for disclosing her status as a domestic violence victim sends a disturbing and unacceptable message that women shouldn't come forward to talk about domestic violence or they too might be fired. It sends a mistaken message to victims that victims are the basis and the threats to our safety when we all know it is the abuser who is the source of the violence. And it also sends a disturbing message to the abuser that we're going to let them get away with their behavior. In fact, that we are giving them another powerful tool to terrorize their victim. The ability to take away someone's financial livelihood simply by showing up at their workplace in a parking lot in their car. You know, this is one of the key problems in domestic violence is the notion that the abuser has all the power. And what that means to the victim very frequently is her unwillingness to break away from a violent situation because of her fear that she will be left destitute, that her children will be left without food, and now that a woman will also have the potential of losing her job because they have been victimized. It goes without saying that we are all deeply concerned about safety and our safety in the workplace. Indeed, safety is and always has been our primary concern. Yet I think I echo the sentiments of so many when I say, when we hear Carrie's story, we think there has got to be a better way. We cannot treat victims like criminals and let criminals go about the world without any responsibility for their conduct. We can't leave victims without financial support at a time when they need a steady paycheck the most to care for themselves and their families. We cannot send the message to victims that they shouldn't talk to their employers about these issues because that is the most valuable line of communication that exists to ensure work workforce safety. We cannot and must not mistake silence on domestic violence issues between employers and employees for workplace safety. Senate Bill 400 is about correcting this imbalance in our current laws. It will protect these victims from discrimination, allow them to come forward and talk to their employers about their situation without the fear of retribution. And it will encourage employers and employees to work together to find reasonable accommodations in the workplace. There are so many reasonable options that employers and employees have. An employee can be relocated to another place in the office, be given a new telephone extension, Employers can, and as I indicated earlier, should be developing workplace safety plans in workplaces throughout our state. We need to consider these aspects in all of what we're doing, either the need to potentially hire or relocate security guards, or deciding that a period of telecommunicating, for example, may be best 
under particular circumstances. There are many options, but firing a victim should not be one of them. I strongly believe that the unknown threat to a workplace is much more dangerous than a known threat. We become empowered by the ability to take action and to protect these victims and to empower them as they go through these difficult circumstances. With information, employees and employers can work together to make a victim safer, their coworkers safer, safer, and the entire workplace safer. And that is why we have the support of the California Police Chiefs Association and the Police Officers Research Association of California. And we are particularly grateful to Carrie for her courage in coming forward, for helping the whole country engage in an important conversation that is long overdue. We've all been moved by your story, and I can say I think that that's true. I saw it, not only did I see it uh, on Good Morning America when it was first uh, uh, posted, but also on the internet. It has received thousands and thousands of replays and comments, and you have, I think, brought together a whole group of people. One out of every four women is estimated to be a victim of domestic violence, and 40% of all victims of domestic violence, stalking, and um, uh, sexual assault are either fired or fear being fired at their workplace because of this. We can no longer put this under the rug. We have to deal with this issue head on. We've all been moved by your story and now you've moved us by your willingness to be part of this solution that while it may not impact your employment situation, it has the opportunity to positively impact victims facing similar situations in the future. So now I want to invite Carrie Charlesworth up to share her story and to thank you again for being willing to step forward and do just that. Thank, thank you, Carrie. You. Thank you so much for having me today. My name is Carrie Charlesworth and I was let go recently from my job as a second grade teacher due to my status as a victim of domestic violence. Studies report that 30% of women are victims of domestic violence. I am one of those women. I suffered silently for years, as women do, not letting the outside world see what was happening in my home. Inside, I felt ashamed, powerless, helpless, and hopeless that life as I knew it would ever change. In 2011, I finally had enough courage and strength to leave. It was the hardest and scariest decision I have ever had to make. From that day, I did what they tell victims to do. I got an emergency protective order, which included a move out order. I filed my own restraining order. I pressed charges. I testified against him, and I filed for divorce. I did everything that I needed to do to protect myself and my children. In January of this year, my life changed. I had informed my principal earlier that morning to keep an eye out for my estranged husband as we had had issues over the weekend. At lunchtime, he was spotted in the parking lot, causing the school where I worked to go on a precautionary lockdown where no student, staff, or teacher were ever in harm's way. Police were called, reports were taken, and an arrest was made. The principal told me to take the week off and that my children, who also attended the school, should stay home as well. The next day, I was informed I was on indefinite leave, and two days later, I was told in a meeting that my children and I needed to stay away from the school. There was no discussion with me at any point about anything that had happened. When asked about my future as a teacher at the school, I was told they did not know and they would have to reevaluate based on what was happening with my estranged husband. In April 2013, I was informed by the diocese that I was too much of a risk to have at any school within the diocese. My world fell apart. All those feelings I had as an abused woman came flooding back. I felt victimized all over again. I felt ashamed, embarrassed, and again, helpless and hopeless. How was I going to take care of my children without a job? Who was going to hire me as a teacher with this label now of being unsafe? Even though I had done everything I was supposed to do, I was treated like the criminal and the one who had done something wrong. My abuser still had control over my life and had now taken completely everything from me. Victims of domestic violence need an opportunity to work with their employer to ensure everyone's safety. And when victims are punished for the behaviors of their abuser, it only reinforces the message that victims of domestic violence should never tell their employer. There were no discussions with me about what was happening or how they could help. 
or how we could work together on next steps that worked for them, for myself, and my children. I was pushed out the door and told never to come back. In my time of most need, I was made to feel as if I had committed the crime. I was punished for the actions of another person that I had no control over. Victims should not have to continue suffering in silence due to the fear they have of losing their job. Victims need to be able to speak up about what is happening to them so that they can get the help they need to leave their situation. The fear of losing their job, the way they can support themselves and their families after they leave an abuser should not be a burden they have to carry. For these reasons, I am pleased to be able to be here today in support of Senate Bill 400, which I believe will truly make a difference for victims facing situations similar to mine. My name is Rachel Langston, and I'm an attorney with the Legal Aid Society Employment Law Center. We are a proud co-sponsor of SB 400, along with the California Coalition to in, uh, Against Sexual Assault and the California Partnership to End Domestic Violence. I would like to thank Ms. Charlesworth for coming forward and sharing her story with us today. Unfortunately, it is not unique. A recent study showed that 40% of domestic violence survivors had either been terminated or feared termination because of their status as survivors. At the Employment Law Center, we hear from many of these victims. A certified nurse's assistant who advised her manager that she had applied for a name change as part of her effort to escape domestic violence only to be told that she was a liability to the company and promptly fired. An office manager who was fired after telling her boss that her ex-husband was stalking her. A social service provider who told us how betrayed she felt when her employer of 14 years terminated her after learning that she feared being hurt by her husband. And there are so many others. We know that maintaining employment is critical to a survivor's ability to escape the violence and to keep herself and her family safe. Firing an employee for being a victim of abuse only re-victimizes them at the most vulnerable time in their life. We should not send the message that if you disclose that you are a victim of domestic violence, you are at risk of losing your job. Instead, we should encourage victims to come forward so that they and their employers can collaborate and can create a safe workplace for everyone. Thank you. Well, thank you. The bill is up uh, in Assembly Judiciary Committee this morning. It's SB 400. We're hoping that it will uh, uh, get through the committee, that we will be able to get the measure passed and into law. And I will uh, tell you that um, there are, uh, and we also have uh, another member of the uh, Women's Caucus, um, uh, if, Sharon, would you like to, Assemblymember Quirkso, would you like to uh, have an opportunity to say a word or two? This measure, by the way, is uh, one of the women's ca uh, the Legislative women, Women's Caucus's five priority bills. So we all recognize the importance of protecting women in the workforce, how critically important it is, particularly with so many women uh, being the supports of their family and uh, being necessary for the well-being uh, of their families to be uh, working and bringing home uh, enough food, uh, money for food on the table and a roof over their children's and their heads as well. So, um, uh, Assembly Member Quirksilva, would you like to say a word or two? I, I will keep it brief, but, but I, not only as a woman here up at the state capitol, but a mother of four, you know, when women get up and go to, go to work, they've already started their job before they even go to work. And they usually end their nights very late. And so to go to work and make sure that you have access and equity are just key beliefs that we need to continue to work on. This moves us forward, uh, but the example of a teacher uh, having her husband visit her on campus and then having ramifications of that certainly hits home with me as a teacher. And uh, so anything I can do to support not only women in the workplace, but women, uh, yesterday we just had a conversation with women, uh, domestic workers, and there's so many issues that we need to continue to look at. You would think in uh, this time that we've made such progress, and yet we have so much more work to do. Again, this is one of the uh, Legislative Women's Caucus's uh, top priority bills, and uh, we thank you again, Carrie, for coming up from San Diego to tell your story, and uh, we look forward to uh, success with this and greater protections in the workplace as we deal with this epidemic of domestic violence in our society. Thank you all very much for your time.